Trapping plays a very important role in modern-day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important, renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country. Who's Your Trapper Outdoors is brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Supply. J3 Outdoors, manufacturer of the Hags Bracket and Body Trap Spring Clip, Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense, Weeby Knives and Fur Handling Tools, HTS Productions, Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense, and Leatherwood Wildlife Art. Okay, thanks for joining us for this episode 15 of season 8, Mus Muskrat Trapping Kayak Style. Hey, this still continues with our uh, semi-live trapping. This was actually just filmed a couple weeks ago uh, here in January. So uh, it's very current and it's something different. It's not something that we typically do. So and then season or episode 16, which will close out the season, will be uh, a finale of the uh, muskrat trapping. So uh, hope you enjoy that. It's uh, like I said, something different and we had a great time doing it. Um, anyways, uh, I think pretty cool episodes. Uh, a couple things I want to mention. I want to mention the um, uh, on our YouTube channel we have a how-to section now, and there are five to ten minute uh, video clips of something specific. Uh, for instance, how to make a dirt hole set, uh, what our hardware setup is on the um, uh, chain of the trap that we're using for land trapping, uh, how to skin a coyote, etc. So, and we'll continue to add to those. So, if you need a quick reference, you just look in our how-to section on the channel. And uh, that'll give you an idea of, or of, of um, a specific reference, uh, quick reference right away on, on how to do something. So anyways, you might want to check that out. Another thing I want to mention is the Show Us Your Bottle Contest. Um, we'll be accepting, um, uh, accepting uh, entries until March 15th. So uh, get a picture of uh, your catch, uh, what product you used from uh, our Leatherwood line, which includes Top Dog Predator Bait. And then uh, if you're in the photo as well, that's even better. Get that photo, send them in, and then you'll have a chance to win one of two $100 gift cards that we're giving away. So uh, uh, get those entries in. For each entry, we'll send out a um, uh, Hoosier Trapper Leatherwood uh, Trapping Scent uh, window decal. So everybody that enters uh, at least gets that. Two of you will get a chance, or two of you will win the $100 gift cards. And then uh, also we'll probably use a lot of those photos in our catalog. So uh, you can show off your catch to your buddies in the Hoosier Trapper catalog. Um, and I think that's it. So I uh, hope you enjoy the episode. from what we typically do we're gonna do some muskrat marsh trapping so it's been a couple years since we've done this last year it was iced up Indiana's got the kind of ice where it's usually not strong enough to walk on uh, but too heavy to run kayaks through so uh, we've got a nice window of weather here for a couple three days give it give it a shot see what happens we're looking forward to it. it's like I said it's something completely different than what we typically do we're here in Indiana state of Indiana so it's home state trapping um, anyways pretty cool
that's our setup, Charlie. All right, hey, since we're work, running out of kayaks, we've got uh, milk crates in the back. It holds a couple dozen traps. So Justin's got obviously two dozen. I got two dozen. And then we use these um, six, pelt, uh, six foot uh, fence posts. And I'm glad they're six foot. Four foot wouldn't do it. Um, and then we put um, gorilla tape on the top, fluorescent gorilla tape to keep uh, so you can see it. Hopefully, we won't you know when we're out checking, you won't miss any of them. Obviously, with the uh, cattails and everything, it's visual is very important. So uh, we're the only ones supposed to be in here. So there shouldn't be any issue with somebody picking up traps. So we'll see what happens. This is our second put in for the day, uh, as far as the second location. And um, you can see it's pretty marshy right here, so uh, we're hoping there's some channels to get through uh, out there a little bit further. I think there is, but um, anyways, we're just going to go out and see what we can find in terms of setting on setting on um, huts and probably set up a few brackets too. So the number two is because of the jaw clearance won't use work, won't work with the hags brackets, but the on our one and a halves we've got uh, another center swivel added some more chain, so we've got whatever that is 24 to 30 inches of chain and then we put the hags bracket on the end so this can be used just as a stake swivel just run through there or you can use it as the, um, for as the bracket the baited bracket and that goes through that hole right there go into the dirt or the mud and then the bracket's right here. So that bracket is made for that part of the frame right there, the trap frame. And that just goes in one of the slots, like, like so. Just like that. And then the carrot should be 10, 12 inches above the trap. And these are pan high. So the pan's a little bit high. Because when that muskrat comes up here to get to the carrot, he actually stands and he straddles that, that trap at times. And that, with the pan being high, actually increases the chances of him getting in it. And then we're gonna put some lure on the top. Muskratlicious. And that's just gonna droop. Ah, well that was lucky droop down on that carrot right there and if it's a little bit drips in the water it kind of disperses in the water so even better so perfect setup so the versatility of that bracket is awesome because like I said we can just use it as a stake swivel like we've been using on the huts or you can make baited sets like this where you're not seeing as much sign there's no huts along here so uh, this is perfect we know there's rats probably living in these cattails and reeds and stuff uh, actually those aren't cattails but those those, those uh, reeds and, and um, but uh, uh, anyways, this perfect setup. Any muskrat coming along here is going to check this out, climb up on the trap, get to the carrot and get caught. As soon as he's caught, then that trap just comes right off that bracket and then he just comes off of there and drowns. So it's a pretty awesome setup. I got to give Jeff Haggerty a lot of credit for he put a tremendous amount of thought into that bracket. So very cool. Trapping products by J3 Outdoors, the most versatile and efficient trapping devices on the market. Who's your trapper deer sense? Success speaks for itself.
Alright, cool. Crosswood catch. Two Victor square jaw. You know, a lot, we've heard some people say, oh, that's overkill for muskrats. And that, that is a perfect trap for muskrats. It's got a huge jaw spread. It's not super strong. It's not much of a fox or coyote trap for sure, which is what it was intended for. And originally was a fox trap. But that is an ideal muskrat trap for the, like I said, it's weak. It's not that strong. Easy to set. Plenty of jaw spread. Plenty of weight. Just an all-around good trap. I mean, look at that. Yeah, just good wide base back foot on aquatic animals is normally a little longer wider so we place the trap in like this not like this so the jaws come up around the big foot that back big foot all right this yeah. is just kind of a little push-up feed bed thing going on here I don't but um, you can see there's a bunch of fresh uh, chewings right here and um, I just push the trap in there and put a little bit of lure on it. To be honest, with that much sign uh, of them coming up here, probably didn't even need to put lure on it, but uh, it sure didn't hurt anything. Anyways, caught a nice rat this morning. It's in a one and a half coil spring. And uh, big rat, nice big rat. So it's one nice thing about January trapping. These rats are good size. They're fully prime. They're good. They'll classify or grade as winter muskrats. Uh, so uh, uh, anyways get this reset I'm not gonna this one pretty undisturbed so I'm just gonna put the trap right back there I'm not gonna put any more lure on it it's uh, I think good to go nice rat on that one there they go Charlie yep Most crap scared him. Yeah. <laughs> we had about four, in, four or five inches of rain. Yeah, double. That's what I'm talking That's about. What I'm talking about. Um, Good size rats. Too. Yeah, no kidding. We had about four or five inches of rain a couple days ago, and this place is really up water-wise, even though it maintains levels pretty well. So it's, you know, it probably otherwise it would have been easier, lower, and easier to work with. Have we not had all that rain? So. I am actually not sure I got the trap in the exact right spot. And since I got such a wide area here, I'm going to go ahead and drop some lure in here just in case. Muskrat licious right on the spot. A generous. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't require that much. It's not the most delicate touch right there. It works clearly. <laughs> you fifty percent on this one. <laughs> nice one. Yep. I always say this is like bluegill fishing. <laughs> it's true. If you got them to catch, you're going to have lots of action. Oh. Doubled up, baby. All righty. Does that mean if we had... Twofer, that mean, twofer. Yeah, does that mean if we had three traps there, we would have had a triple? I'll let you know tomorrow if we catch another one. <laughs> All right, kind of along this wooded edge here, you can see the bees for beavers have been in here cutting. And the muskrat actually kind of built up a hut right here amongst these trees. And I set one on it. Yeah, we've got, it. got a nice rat here. Well, I'm at it. to show you the setup. On the number twos, we just took them. I added some chain. It's probably got close to 30 inches of chain on here. Got it center swiveled, of course it's swiveled right here, and then we just got a basic universal type of swivel on the end here. Just keeps them from getting bound up too much. Um, gives them enough to walk, you know, fall off and drown uh, in the water. And um, 
and we got these six foot poles with the tape on the top. So that's that's our setup. It's a simple setup. It's working. Um, I guess you just can't argue with stuff that's been tested and proven over time. So, anyways. That's it. Looks so simple it works. Gotta love these hot hags brackets. I'll tell you what, they're... Got a muskrat, obviously muskrat wanted the carrot. So pretty cool. I like us, well, like we were talking when we set this thing up. Don't have dens, can't see, or you just don't want to deal with fighting to find them, that kind of thing. This is a great alternative for that. Um, super simple to set up, super quick. You can set a lot of these in a really short period of time. Um, so anyways, highly recommend them. All right, end of check day one. Pretty good day. Awesome day, Joey! <laughs> Feeling my age, I'll tell you, that's a lot of paddling. There's a... Uh, a lot of hard work going into this, <laughs> but uh, it's hard to be efficient in this line of work with two kayaks and trying the film. Yeah, the filming really throws a wrench in it because in the beginning we could split up, but if we want to film each other, we have to follow each other. Right. So it makes it difficult, but oh well. Obviously, we got the job done. We're having fun, and the weather's great. So here's the uh, statistics for the day. We had 118 traps set, and we caught 58 muskrats. So we needed, what do we need? One more muskrat to be at straight up 50%. So I'll take it, that's not bad. Uh, oh, that's real good. Uh, basically a 50% catch. Had a couple flipped off traps, so yeah. Good, good day. Good day. Uh, overall, really nice big muskrats. Like I said earlier, January, uh, considered winter muskrats. They're as good as they're gonna get, basically, so. Uh, Good looking rats, big rats. We only had two or three smaller ones, so awesome. Hopefully we can stack a few more up tomorrow. Yeah, we got one more day to check, see what happens tomorrow. I'm a, I know our 50% won't hold up for tomorrow, so. No. But <laughs> we'll see what happens. I've been a professional trapper for over 40 years, and in that time, I've skinned literally thousands of animals. I've learned that it doesn't matter how cool a knife looks on your hip. What really matters is sharpness and reliability. And that's why I created the Weeby Wicked Sharp line of replacement blade knives. These are knives that will quickly skin your critters without skinning your wallet. Visit WeebyKnives.com to get the new Monarch folding knife with three replacement blades for just $19.95. Weeby Knives, Wicked Sharp. Leatherwood Trapping Sense. Success speaks for itself. Okay, product highlight. And this is the Hags uh, multi-lock invented by Jeff Haggerty. And like the um, Hags brackets and spring clips and stuff, Jeff has thought of everything. I think he's got it completely covered. Um, first of all, it's excellent quality steel, very tough cons um, construction, good good gauge um, here anyways, and, and USA made. So, um, But this is a drowner lock, and um, it's got it's got several options on it so you can use it here's all the options here but um but basically it'll work on on number two chain as a as a drowner slide like that and then of course it won't come back up chain is my favorite because you can actually take 10 foot of, 10 foot of, of machine chain and actually just pulled it right in your hand so you don't have to worry about cable and stuff so it makes it really easy to handle and i realize it's a little more of an investment but it'll actually hold up over time you can use run it on cable and this is just 330 second cable and you can go um, clear up from 332 to uh, 1 8 inch cable and that'll fit on there so that'll slide down but it won't come back up and then you can also run it for those of you that use the rebar rods it'll work on um, 3 8 uh, and half inch rod this is uh, rebar both rebar or smooth rod and this is half inch right here and here again it'll slide down and won't come back up so um, like I said, Jeff has, has thought of basically any application that you're going to use um, for this this drowner bracket, uh, and they're still, you know, pretty small profiled uh, piece of hardware, uh, very very tough. And of course, your trap attaches here. You can attach your attach your trap um, with an S hook, um, and he's got the the attachment holes quite large. So a lot of times when when you're attaching the um, 
trap on a typical drowners that they make the, the holes not very big but this will even take the largest size s hook if you want to use something like that um for your uh, attachment where you could even use a uh, pre-bent rivet off of a swivel and put that in there that probably actually would be even better so anyways i, I can't say enough about this this uh, um drowner that uh Jeff has put together is like I said he's he's covered all the bases he's thought of everything a good quality heavy duty product so uh, for those of you that are water trapping you might check these out because they are definitely well made um, versatile product an answer got uh, and these were actually came off the the how to videos so what someone asked about air skinning um, animals where you actually take an air compressor make a slit and and puff that animal up between the skin and the carcass uh, we have actually done that and tried it, and it, we found no benefit to doing it. Um, it puffs up quite nicely. It, it looks like it would really work uh, for us. It, we tried it on more than one occasion, um, and it really didn't do anything. It might have made the head a little bit easier, and that's a big might. Um, and it, to me, at that point, it's insignificant. It's, that's not where the issue's at in terms of pulling a coyote skin. So um, if you're going to go to that trouble, you might as well just get you a um, hydraulic puller uh, it just makes much, so much more sense. So um, I don't have uh, any, I'm not going to give any merit to the uh, uh, air scanning method uh, uh, for for animals, coyotes particularly, but uh, um, anyways. Another uh, off the how-to is uh, Justin did a, a tutorial on how to skin a coyote. Just kind of a, uh, in the, it was in the field, but we're hanging up um, so that we weren't, we weren't using a hydraulic puller or anything. And then somebody asked, could the next video be a bobcat? And we will probably eventually get to that. But my quick answer to that, or short answer to that, is that it's basically the same as a coyote. So anything that has a fur tail, you're going to skin the tail out. Uh, you're going to pull the bone and then pull it down uh, a case skin method like you, like you would. So generally, most animals are all skinned the same. And the, the whole question comes in wh whether or not uh, you save the tail or don't save the tail. For instance, on a muskrat, you don't save the tail. Uh, the only one that just kind of throws a loop in it are beavers and they're skinned open and we'll get to that at some point but um, uh, on the how-to section but uh, any, anyways generally for you beginners uh, everything is basically skinned the same way and it just comes down to whether you save the tail or not so um, pretty simple someone had mentioned and this is off the how-to as well uh, Justin did one on how to make wax dirt and they said that their wax dirt smelled after they got done and typically that is uh, two issues. One, maybe you're getting it too hot. Uh, and uh, when you get it too hot, it goes along with possibly scorching something that's in the dirt. And normally it comes from dried vegetation. So if you got dried vegetation in there and it gets too hot, then that actually causes that to burn and that's what's giving you that smell. So that smell probably isn't going to shy any animals away, um, but they're gonna be curious about it and dig at it. because. Uh, the, the smell of smoke, uh, which we've referenced over the years uh, with our campfire sets and deer camps, that kind of thing's a great attractant. But it's not something that, when nothing else smells like that and you got that over your trap, they're going to want to dig at it. So, uh, and that's typically where that comes from, is where you have uh, vegetation, uh, usually dried vegetation in there that's actually getting too hot and burning and causing it, having that scorch smell. So, um, if you when you're making wax dirt it's it's key not to just have dirt only have it have it bone dry and then you know try not to have foreign material in there and then also you want to try to keep it from getting too hot so um just kind of wrap up uh three kind of uh questions that were out there uh, and like i said that's from our how-to section um in uh on the youtube channel so keep sending those questions uh we'll keep answering them and uh appreciate that all right, everyone, thanks for watching. We have the new Hoosier Trapper Supply catalogs out. Pretty cool bobcat there, uh, Jake caught there in New Mexico. Pretty nice. Um, they're available. You can call here at the shop at 317-881-3075, or you can request one online at HoosierTrapperSupply.com. It's right there on the home page. Hit the button, and we'll send you one uh, in the mail. So, pretty slick. Also, got to say, uh, make sure you're following us on all social media so you can keep up to date. Um, we do have an email newsletter you can sign up for on the website as well. We're on Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, obviously YouTube. And on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So um, that will keep you posted on brand new episodes that pop up. Not just on Hoosier Trapper Outdoors, but also on the Fur Shed series and also the Trap House podcast. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time. Join us on February 28th for the next episode of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors.